Good morning, Trinity Church. It's Lauren and Liz here coming to you from Stratford, our home here in Stratford. And we are happy to be able to share a few worship songs with you this morning. I want to begin by reading to you from the book of John, um, chapter 16, verse 32. And this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. But the time is coming. In fact, it is already here when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So we celebrate this morning Jesus overcoming the world. So let's sing this Trinity favorite together. Lo, in the grave he lay, Christ arose. Thank you. 
Trinity is Jeff here. I want to welcome you to Sundays Online at Trinity. Just want to say thank you to Lauren and Elizabeth for uh, leading us in worship this morning. It's always a blessing to be able to worship with you. Thank you so much. For those of you who are able to join us on Friday for our Good Friday service, it was so good to see you all. It's been so long. So thankful that we were able to connect and use that technology. It's good. It was good to gather together. Just want to point, take a few minutes to bring you up to speed on what's happening at Trinity, what's new, resources that are available to you. Just congratulations, first and foremost, to Jake and Julie Bercy, who uh, welcomed little Hannah Page Bercy into the world on Thursday morning in the wee hours of the morning. So congratulations, Jake and Julie, on the arrival of Hannah. Can't wait to meet her. Rebecca and Andrew, Congratulations on your wedding. It's been a long time coming and we just want to bless you and congratulate you on your marriage. We wish you all the best and the Lord's blessing as you start this new chapter in your life together. Congratulations. I want to take some time to direct you to the Trinity EMC website. That's really the hub where you can find all things Trinity. There are devotionals there, you can make a prayer request, there are links to the Sundays online services. Really, we've got a really, for the kids, we've got a really robust uh, Trinity Online, Trinity Kids Online um, 
link. So kids, I encourage you to check that out. There's videos and devotionals and all kinds of things for you to do. There's even a little uh, link to family prayer tips. So check out the new robust Trinity Kids Online at Trinity UC. Those of you who uh, are looking for prayer or needing prayer, I remind you that you can reach out to Karen through Trinity Prayer Chain at trinityemc.com. If you would like somebody to talk to, uh, I encourage you to contact one of the elders or you can contact Deborah at the church uh, office. She will connect you with somebody. Uh, we'll give you a call and just chat with you and, and prayer with you over the phone, pray with you over the phone. So yeah, if you need somebody, uh, give them a call. Also remind you that there's still opportunities for you to give. You have to continue to do that to support the church and all the ministries that are still functioning. Um, so there are various ways to give. You can find out those as well on the website. But Brian tells me that the preferred method is through e-transfer. It's simple. There's low, no cost to the church. So you can send an e-transfer to give at trinityemc.com. So I encourage you to do that. Finally, I want to encourage you to stay connected. As I said, it was amazing to see everybody at the Good, Good Friday service through Zoom. But face-to-face, voice-to-voice, face-to-face is not possible, but voice-to-voice -voice is. So, uh, if, so if the Lord lays somebody on your mind that you believe that could really be encouraged by a phone call, give them a call, pick up the phone, call them, and um, give them a call, send them a text, email. So let's stay connected and continue to encourage and love one another as brothers and sisters through in Christ. You know, it was really, really good to see everybody on Friday. And it's been a long time. I never would have known or thought, you know, when this all began and we were told that we weren't able to gather together, that it would still be going on this long. And it doesn't look like they're, it's going to end anytime soon. This is a challenging time for all of us. But the good thing is, is that we're all in it together. And the best thing is that we have the hope in Jesus. So this weekend, as we celebrate Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection on Sunday, knowing that we have hope in him, knowing that he laid down his life for us, we have hope in him. And we need to cling to that and stick to that and trust in that. So we say, thank you, Jesus, that you went to the cross so that we may have eternal life and forgiveness of our sins. So before I pass it over to Jake, I just want to pray for you, encourage you, and just say thank you for staying connected and loving one another. So Father, we thank you for who you are. Jesus, we thank you that you went to the cross. We thank you that you were obedient to the Father. We thank you that we can have hope in you and eternal life. And although we cannot gather together this weekend to celebrate together, we can meet together through media. We can meet together and encourage one another over the phone and through technology. We thank you for those opportunities. If we were gathered together, we would be declaring this weekend on Resurrection Sunday that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So will you join me now in declaring that? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we thank you for the hope that we have in you, Jesus. I'm going to turn it over to Jake now so that he can share his message that God has laid upon his heart for us. And I say, have a great week, Trinity, and be blessed. Over to you, Jake. Good morning, Trinity. And happy Easter. Today's the most important day for us as Christians and the most significant day for us as Christians as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we serve a God who is living and who is active and who continues to work among us. 
we're not just said we're not just following a set of moral principles or or uh, a religion, but we're actually serving a living person. So let today be a day of celebration for us. I realize that right now in our context, it, it seems a little strange to celebrate at this point in time with COVID nineteen. Um, what was once a virus that was really far off is is now something that is really close to home, and I'm sure many of you now know people who are experiencing this virus. So uh, it is a time of mourning in our in our culture right now. So and honestly, I in my heart I feel this strange tension because today is a day of celebration for us, but at the same time, I'm mourning the loss of so many people around the world. So, but as I've reflected more on this. It's made me think that today is actually probably the most important time for us as Christians to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Uh, we serve a God who is living and we serve a God who has the power over death. So I think it's super important for us, during, especially during this time, to, to cling to that hope we have in Christ. In John 11, verse 25 to 26, Jesus says to Martha, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Whoever believes in, whoever lives by believing in me will never die. So let's spend some time this morning meditating on the reality of Jesus' resurrection and reflecting on the glory and power of Christ. So if you want to turn with me to Luke 24, verse 1 to 12. Luke 24, verse 1 to 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were there, or while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. And then right after this story, Jesus appears to two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. And then these disciples run to the other disciples and say, We saw the, the risen Lord. And then while they're all together, Jesus appears to them again. So in Luke 24, verse 46 to 49, Jesus says, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Wow, isn't that an incredible moment for the early church and for us today? And it's interesting to me as I read that, that this isn't just a story of excitement for the early church. It's also a story of confusion. They're, the early disciples are like, what is happening? When, when the, the, the women come and tell them that they experienced uh, or that, that Christ was risen, they, they didn't believe them. They were confused. They didn't expect that Jesus would rise from the dead. So it's an interesting moment that happens there. But as we reflect on this amazing story, I want to ask, what does this mean for us today? What does the resurrection mean for us today? It's not just a cool historical moment, although it definitely is a cool historical moment, but that's not just what it is. So there's a few implications that I draw from this story. The first is that we serve a living God. The angels say, why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is risen. I think... A lot of times in the church we talk about Jesus rising from the dead and sometimes we forget how crazy of a statement this is. We're claiming that someone died and rose again. I've heard many skeptics say things like, 
Well, obviously Christianity isn't true because it's not physically possible for someone to rise from the dead. And that's the whole point. <laughs> As we saw in the, in the Gospels, the disciples actually didn't even believe. They were confused by the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. It, people don't just rise from the dead. So I'm sympathetic to skeptics because at one point in time I was, I was a pretty skeptical person. So I encourage you, if you are someone who, who is naturally skeptical, I encourage you to dive into the evidence. Look at some of the early church records and some of the, some of the early historical writers about the early church. And you'll see that there's a lot of strong evidence that, that Jesus rose from the dead. There's a, I remember hearing a, a quote from a Jewish historian, not even a Christian historian, but a Jewish historian named Pincus Lapid. And he says this, If the disciples were totally disappointed and on the verge of desperate flight because of the very real reason of the crucifixion, it took another very real reason in order to transform them from a band of disheartened and dejected Jews into the most self-confident missionary society in world history. Something significant happened where these disciples went from a place of their Lord had just died uh, to a place where all of these disciples are willing to die for the sake of the gospel. Something huge happened there. And as, as Christians, we know this is because they experienced the risen Christ. So we serve a living God. The next thing is that we, we are a sent people. We are a people who are sent into the world. In verse 47, Jesus says, Repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So this isn't just a description of what's going to happen. This is also a calling to us. Now, uh, a lot of times when people think of the word repentance or repent, uh, it's often a pretty heavily loaded word. So a lot of times people associate this word with Christians going out and being overly judgmental and and sharing the gospel with a judgmental spirit. But really, the word here in Greek is metanoeo. And really what this word just means is to change your mind, or to change your understanding. We're, we're going into the world and calling people to shift their understanding and their minds towards Jesus. And this kind of mind shift, uh, it's not just changing your thoughts, but it's, it's a rejection of your old way of life, and it's a pledge of allegiance to Jesus as our Lord and as our teacher. So it's very, repentance is actually a very important part of the good news. This is, this is the act that restores us to a right relationship with Christ. And so for any of you who are in very close relationships, you know that repentance is a very important part of just our everyday relationships as well. Um, if I do something uh, wrong to Julie and I don't say I'm sorry for it and I don't acknowledge that what I've done is wrong, our relationship is really going to suffer because of that. Now obviously repentance and turning to Jesus is a big, is much more significant kind of repentance, but in the same way when we have a relationship with God, we, we also must have that daily practice of turning our minds to Christ and shifting our thoughts to Christ. So yes, as Christians, we are a called people. We're called to go to those outside of the church to bear witness to Christ and to bear witness to his resurrection and to call people into this close relationship with God. And as you know, um, if you have this close relationship with God, it is such a beautiful place to be. It's a place of, of healing and a place of restoration and a place of joy. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to 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 go into the world and call people towards God. The next thing is that we're an empowered people. We have the Holy Spirit uh, living in us. Jesus promised the disciples that he would give them his Holy Spirit, and he said he would clothe them with power from on high. And as we see later uh, at the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit does come with power, and the disciples begin to speak in tongues and have this miraculous power of the Spirit. In Romans 8, verse 11 to 13, Paul says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, 
He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. So in these two passages, we see, we see the Holy Spirit empowering us in two ways. So the first way is that the Spirit gives us power over our sinful nature. Now for you, or for many of you, this might seem like a hard thing to believe. Uh, you're thinking, how, how could the Holy Spirit actually live within me when I still have bad thoughts or I still, I still do things that are wrong sometimes? And it's interesting in this passage, uh, it seems like this process is a more continual thing. Paul encourages us to say, uh, by saying, we must allow the Holy Spirit to put to death the misdeeds of the body. Now I know I've met some people who were drug addicts and all of a sudden when they experience Christ, uh, their addictions have just been cut off instantly and they've been restored right away. But I know for many other people when they first encounter Christ, it's a longer process of, of what's called sanctification or being made holy, where the Holy Spirit slowly starts to root the evil habits and our evil sinful tendency out of our lives. Uh, so yeah, that's the one way that the Spirit empowers us. And the next way is through spiritual gifts. Um, as we saw with the early church, God clothes them with power from on high so that they begin speaking in tongues. Um, God desires to give, give us these gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul has a big list of all these gifts. He says there's prophecy, there's tongues, there's interpretation, there's healing, uh, the gift of healing, the gift of discernment, wisdom, knowledge. And so there's this really long list of, of gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. And I think, uh, as I've reflected on Christianity in our culture, I think we've We've really lost a lot of these. Uh, some of the more miraculous ones like prophecy and healing uh, are often left out of the church. We, we don't really strongly pursue them as Christians. Paul encourages us to, to eagerly desire these spiritual gifts. And, and a better translation of that is actually to, to zealously desire these spiritual gifts. Uh, sure, these, these shouldn't be the main focus of, of our pursuits as Christians. Ultimately, our main desire is to love God and to love our neighbor. But the Bible encourages us to, to strongly desire these spiritual gifts as well. So I encourage you, if, if you haven't experienced any, any gifts from the Spirit, I encourage you to ask, ask God to, to give these to you. So in John 11, verse 25 to 26, Jesus says to Martha, and this is right after Lazarus has died, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? This is what he says to Martha. Do you believe this? So I want to ask you today, do you believe this? Jesus' resurrection is such an important moment for us. It's not just a cool historical moment, but, it's, but God draws us close to himself so that we can become a part of his family and that we can share in this resurrection life. So today let's celebrate uh, Easter and let's celebrate the resurrection of Christ together. I'm just going to close in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for your power and thank you for your resurrection. We thank you for the sacrifice that you, you gave for us on the cross. We just pray right now for all of those who are suffering right now and in the world and the tremendous amount of, of pain and suffering that people are going through. We just pray that you will draw people close to yourself and, and draw people into your, your loving arms. We pray that you would use Trinity and use us as your people to, to spread your word into to the world and to those around us. Thank you for everything that you've done for us in our lives, Lord. We, we submit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. May God bless you and keep you and, and protect you during this time. Blessings.
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth. Yeah. Uh -huh.